All right, well, so I'll just do a quick introduction uh, before we get started, but the, the intent with this workshop is it's very uh, hands-on, so we're gonna spend the whole time pretty much um, just working on creating a web application, and while you're at it, uh, getting a tour of Orion, which is an Eclipse project um, that's building development tools for the web that, that run in your browser. So we're hoping by doing this hands-on session, you'll both get a tour of all the different capabilities of Orion, and if you're not familiar with uh, web development, you know, build a, a neat little example of a web application uh, while we're at it. So you learn a little bit about Orion, you learn a little bit about uh, web development. Um, we don't actually have any slides. We've done this in the past where we s spent 20 minutes giving introduction to the architecture and all this kind of stuff, but we really want it to be hands-on so you can learn about what's available, what the capabilities are, um, and then there's all, you know, we can give you links to further information if you want to read more about the project later. So, as Shimon said, the first step is just is to create an account on Orion Hub. Uh, if you have any trouble with that, you could run on run the server on localhost. What we put on the USB stick is a copy of the Orion server, which you can run locally on your machine. So you can do that if you want, or you can go to orionhub.org, create an account. Um, and if you have any trouble with with that, we'll just wait at that point and make sure everyone's got that far before we go to the next step. Has anyone had any trouble with that? I, I can also create an account for you as an administrator if, that, if, if I need to. If you have uh, email, some people had trouble accessing email on the network here, so if you have trouble with that, we can, we can set it up for you. Yeah. Some words about you, John, right? <laughs> sure, uh, uh, yeah, so I didn't introduce myself. I'm John Arthorn, and this is Shimon Brandis. We are committers on the Orion project. Uh, we also work on, uh, have worked on many other Eclipse projects in the past, including the platform. Uh, but currently our focus is on the, the Orion browser-based tools. So, so we should start from creating an account. So uh, you go to, uh, uh, to, to, this, to this address, open your browser, Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer, they all should work. Enter this uh, address HTTPS or I'm how to order. You should be taken to the login login page and try to create an account. So um, it should be easy, like uh, you know, providing uh, your username, password, email, then confirm. Okay. So we'll, we'll go through the first steps and then uh, we'll stop and walk around and make sure that everyone's caught up to the same point. So you might as well go ahead and log in. Should be ready. Yeah. Should be right yeah. away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you see it? No. You, you don't see it, or? No, I didn't receive the mail. Okay. So if you have an account created, okay, so we'll go back to you in a second. So if you have an account created, so just uh, go to this orionhub.org page again, click these three dots, which is a logo, uh, Orion logo, and provide your credentials. Uh, in my case, I have uh, my Orion account um, connected with a Gmail, uh, what's possible in, in Orion, so I just click uh, this G and, and that's it. Oh, it's gonna, yeah, I was going to try to create a new user, but I was having trouble. So, any other person has uh, issues with uh, creating an account? Or just no, maybe. Okay, so use log in as ECF user one with the same password. ECF, ECF like Eclipse Conference yeah. user one, U S E R one, mm -hmm. same password. Okay. 
Good. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> I don't. Only one person, I think, should use that at a time. <laughs> You'll get really confused otherwise. Uh, I can do. I can create more if we need to. Your account is not active. It's not active. Hmm. Okay. Maybe it still has to send an email. So was that fake email that he used, or? Yeah. Let me try to create an account. Okay, can I log, with, log in with my normal Google account? Or? Uh, only after you've created an account, unfortunately. So once you've logged in, and then you have to link your account to a Google account, and then you can. Okay, so try again with ECF user two. <laughs> I created an account. Oh, did you do that already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I sent, I, re I received the email right oh, away. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, okay, so we're we're just going to start with creating a Hello World uh, HTML. HTML page. So the first step we're going to do is create a folder. Um, so are we going to clone the repository first? Or um, just a backup? Yeah, actually, that's sure. Let's do that. Uh, so we'll clone the, if, for those who haven't already done it, we'll clone the repository that has all of the tutorial materials in it. Um, we could build it from, we can build this whole thing from scratch, but having the repository there is helpful if you get stuck, you can look at the, there's sort of answers to all the exercises you can look at um, and get caught up. So if you can, I don't know if you can read that from the, but it's GitHub. Uh, I can turn off the lights at the front. No. I don't want to touch that. Hopefully you can read it. So it's github.com slash j a R T H O R N slash Orion end to end. And if you go there and there's, there'll be a, a URL here, you can select, copy to your clipboard, and then back into Orion. What's the easiest way? There's, you can go new, new get repository. Sure. That's what we're using. Anyone else with Wi-Fi problem? Yeah. Same problem? Is this not connecting or? You can find it, but it was working well this time, so you don't understand. Yeah, that's <laughs> like we're on the atten we're on the attendee one. It's the same as the, is that what you're using? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm usually not last year, but yeah, well, well, we are prepared for Wi-Fi failure, so if you have copied the contents of this stick, yeah. then you can start the server on your own laptop and run it locally. So what you can do there, if you've copied it, um, I guess you, you should have a... Um, oh, has this already been... Oh, have you already unzipped it? No, so it's... I unzipped it. Oh, you already unzipped. Uh, so that's... The, Oh, so you, oh, this you're on Linux. Yeah. Okay, so you've already unzipped it. So, so then if you, uh, where did you unzip it to? Okay. So if you and then double click uh, on, uh, or 
run that. Okay, so just the default for job is ID. Yes. Okay, so just go to the browser and log off as ID. Very close one. Most of what? That's right. And create an account. Can you not launch it? Oh. Keep logging. Keep logging. Uh, I mean, that's the that's the next native executable on Linux. Um, can you just run it? Can you try to invoke it from the command line? Just dot slash Orion. Dot slash. Dot slash. I dot slash. Yeah, Orion. There we go. Uh, okay. So just. Um, you can, um, if you don't have access to uh, the uh, mm -hmm. it's the privilege for, for uh, from GitHub, you can folder, uh, maybe? Create a new folder. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> go to the. Uh, uh, well, let's try it. Open a browser. Doesn't look very happy, but it, if, so if you open a browser and go to um, localhost colon 8080. Colon 80. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now create an account on there. You should be okay. <laughs> you, and it's, that's totally unrestricted. You don't need an email. Okay, does anyone else have, you're, you're okay on the Wi-Fi? Okay. So we, we're using one local instance. Yeah, same here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's move on. So what we have in this repository, if you, Shimon, if you go back to Orion, so we have um, the project we're, we're, we're doing is a web application that, that, that is displaying information about the uh, Elite One Rugby Championship League in, in France. We've done a similar tutorial in uh, Germany. We used Bundesliga and we, we thought, what's a good league that's local to this area? So we picked the, rug, the local rugby league. Apparently it's popular uh, in this area. So that's um, what we're using as our example. Um, there's two folders here, exercises and solutions. So in the solutions folder, there are um, sort of completed exercises that you can go to and look at if you, if you get stuck or if you want to try it later. Um, if you just expand that, solutions. So we have, there was, we're working down to five different exercises. I'm not sure we'll get through all five because we've usually done this with a three hour time slot and it's, it's, we only have about an hour and a half. So uh, we'll see how far we get. And then in the exercises folder, I think it's just an empty, your app goes here. So we're gonna create our application in this exercises folder, but if you ever get stuck or whatever, you can go look at this, the solutions. So we'll start by, if, under the exercises folder, creating, so you just use a right click context menu, just like uh, a local, uh, like Eclipse, new file, or you can use the file menu at the top. So in, we'll call it index.html. So actually, just wanted to mention, by the way, um, one of the big values for us of doing these workshops is, is getting user feedback from people. So especially if you've never tried this stuff before and this is your first time trying it, uh, please give us your feedback either during or after the session about what you liked or didn't like or what you found confusing. Because uh, we've actually, after the tutorial in Germany, we actually re Everyone complained there was no context menus, like right click, uh, and, no and no menus across the top at all. Um, and everyone complained about that. And we, we were trying not to make something that looked like an IDE. We wanted to make something that really looked like a native web application. But you know, when every single developer using it said, I really want context menus and a menu on the top, we kind of caved into the pressure and we created those uh, in the past about six months or so. So we certainly value your feedback and we will take that and make changes for the next version um, based on that. So, okay, so we have an index HTML. So we're just gonna cheat here. If you hit control space for content assist, uh, you'll get a, a basic HTML 
a page, you know, there's a template for a basic HTML page you'll get created for you. And we'll just, I don't know, put a message, put a, sure. So this, is, this part is not too exciting. I'm sure everyone has built at, at least this much of a web page. Right, right. So, yeah, control S to save, or there's a save action in the file menu. Or if you open the, the wrench, the spanner in the top corner, there's an auto save option, which some people love it, some people hate it. I've really gotten used to it, and I, I, I love the fact that I never have to worry about losing anything. Um, and that, uh, that's really nice, you can turn on. So now we've built our, our simple website. And the easiest way to run it, because we're already in a browser, if you open the menu, uh, the, you know, the context menu on the file, and you say open with, is it in the, it's probably in the view menu as well at the top? Yeah. Open with, and you can pick web browser, and it'll open that file. You probably want to control click, and so you have a separate tab. Right, okay, so we've got our simple web application, simple website, not very exciting, um, running. We can go back and edit and we can view it, et cetera. So that was really just to get your, your feet wet with the really basics of creating a file, um, launching it, and being able to view it. So, yep. Yep, okay, we'll go around and we'll make sure everyone's caught up. Inside, so how do I? Oh, I see. Okay, so create. Um, let's see. I think create a new folder. And just call it whatever tutorial. Can I just sit here? And then, if you right-click on that and go import file or zip. Yeah. Sure. There we go. Okay, and was there a problem over here as well? <laughs> you okay? <laughs> hey, yeah, the content was gone, but it's, I think it's due to the network's connection. Oh, okay. So. But just huh. one yep. question, if I have on the context menu this open in the browser, right. can I um, um, have some thing that it opens in a new tab? So that I have not only mm. forward back when Yes, no, I understand. So it's, it's just the... Um, it's just a link, so yeah, whatever your browser does. Link, yeah, so if you right click on the link, you usually yeah, open yeah, a new tab. Yeah. yeah. Does that, that work for you? Or? That works. Yes. Okay, yeah, or it's control it's click. Network, if, it's, uh, the network is, is slow. I see. Losing the, the menus. Right, oh, okay. Okay, but you've got it, you got it now? Okay. Okay, you're, you're good? Okay. You have? Okay, so hopefully this is not too boring. Is it? Was it a while ago or recently? Or? I'm currently trying to do some stuff with Orion. Okay. The problem is I'm kind of coming at it from a completely different angle, so I figure if I do this tutorial, I'll see what I missed on the way I went in. Right, okay. I'm trying to plug in for Orion. Okay, so that's a more advanced thing. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm trying to plug in without having to use Orion first. Right, that's, that's true. Did you have a. You were you okay or okay? How about you, Pat? Are you following along or you just do an email? Yeah, you, you are expect so I think that uh, you, uh, could you try to clear the cache of the browser? Go to the um, you know, like history and what was the problem you seen? So uh, I think that uh, all, not all plugins are properly, properly loaded. Mm -hmm. So when, you, okay. when he clicks the index.html file in the navigator, yeah. a row page is open instead of uh, opening the editor. 
Mm. And it's, it's and, and it happens when something is wrong with uh, with uh, plugins. So oh, okay, well maybe go into the settings and reload plugins from there. Uh, well, yeah, but I think that we need to clear the cache anyway. Sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay, so we need to the Phoenix HTML again. Yeah. And also it looks like problems with connection. The network is getting slower. <laughs> so could you, could you run a local instance from the state? This is Windows or Linux? So maybe what I'll do is I'll start on the next exercise and you can help them get caught up. If, if you're behind, you can always grab one of the, the answers. So the, for the next exercise, we're going to do something a little bit more interesting. We're going to um, build a little bit of a web application. Whoa, okay, the network has gotten slow. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh. Sorry, let me just, I need to get the solutions next to me so I can refer to them. Oh, here we are. So I'm gonna do a a less, uh, less bandwidth uh, intensive version of this. So what we, would, what we were gonna do at this point is clone a couple of Git repositories that, repositories that have some popular uh, libraries that we were gonna use to build the application. So the first one is this JavaScript library called Tabletop, which is used for, um, tr it basically treats a Google spreadsheet as a database that you can use uh, to back your web application. So it's a really great, lightweight way to build a web application with the data store being a, a Google spreadsheet. So the, what you need is this one script called tabletop.js and I'm just going to, I mean we could clone it on, on GitHub but I'm just going to grab it from the solutions folder so we have this, actually I'll just copy this whole lib directory here and put it into my exercise folder. So I've got the tabletop.js library in there. And then the other script we're going to, well, not a script, we're also going to use some CSS from Twitter Bootstrap, which is a, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it, it's a library for um, building really nice looking web applications, essentially, and we're going to use some of the styling from Bootstrap to make our application look nicer. So this Bootstrap CSS is another file that we could clone the, boot, the, the, the Bootstrap project and then bring it in, but since we're, you know, the network seems a bit slow, we'll just copy it from, from our solution folder and put it into our exercise here. So now we should have a, a lib folder with tabletop, a bootstrap, CSS, and, and our index HTML. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, Instead of a simple web page, we're going to load some scripts here. So I'm just going to type it out, and then we'll t and I'll talk about it. Okay, so we need to import some style sheets. Shoot. 
Okay, and we're going to add some scripts. Shoot. Apparently, I don't know how to use a Polish keyboard. Sorry? I'm having trouble with your keyboard. I think I'm hitting some different key. Wait, 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 wait. Try now. It's better. Uh, let's see. No, that's worse. Wait, wait, wait. This is also working. Yeah, that's okay. Is it? No, it's it's okay, but let's try to switch to E. Yeah, okay. Okay. Try now. Okay. All right, script. Oh, shit. What did I do? Shimon, help. <laughs> Apparently in Poland, people like to do this. <laughs> okay, I think I got it. I don't think we need this one. Okay, I'm going to skip that. Okay, so we have a style sheet, we have tabletop. JS, we have our own script. All right. Now I'll create a little bit of content here. Div. What's that? Ah. Thank you. Okay, body class equals table background. Yeah. Okay. What's the address to settings? Sorry? What's the address to settings? Could you just hover over it just to see? Settings slash settings HTML. Okay. Okay, so this is so far is really Oh shoot, what did I do? So far this is really simple. I just have a couple of style, or a style sheet and a couple of scripts and um, a body where I've given some classes which we can use to define our styles against. So let's try running this, see what happens. Oh, we've already got it. Okay, what did I do here? Source equals lib. Ah, of course. Tabletop. Okay, so I forgot to create my script. So the next step, so we've got an index HTML, and now we're going to create a, a, a JavaScript file which has our application in it. Okay, so
Okay, so on the, it's just saying on load of the window, we're going to in, call tabletop init with this spreadsheet. I'm going to grab the URL later. And we're passing into tabletop this function show info, which we're going to invoke on, on the result that, we come, that comes back from the spreadsheet. So function show info. So this, this data object we're getting back is a JSON representation of that spreadsheet. So it's got elements for every, uh, every row, and then within that element, every, every cell can be represented in the, in the JSON. So we'll see what that looks like. So each, okay, data teams, elements for each. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna run this other function against every team in the table. Okay, so what I'm doing with this function is we, we're running this function on every team in our in our database, and for each team in the database, we're going to create a uh, we're going to grab that table element that we created in our in our HTML, create a div, and build a we're going to call another function that's going to build a representation of the information about that team, and we're adding that creating this HTML element and sticking it into, into, into the page. So now we just need one more function, which is building the content. One yep. Um, I also created this JS file, but I have no syntax highlight in here. Um, that's, so, and you're on Orion Hub or are you using localhost? Okay. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I think of is that the plugin that provides syntax highlighting isn't. So we should probably go just in case to uh, the settings page and click reload all just in case. Sure, I'll show that. So there's a little gear icon in the bottom left here, settings. Um, and wow, it's really slow. Okay, so in here, there's lots of different settings, but the one we're going to go to is plugins. And this shows all the different plugins that are currently installed into this IDE, uh, in, into Orion. And these plugins can come from anywhere. They could be from all different domains. Um, but if you're having connection problems, it could be that if you do a reload all here, that might take a few seconds, apparently. Okay, so I got a message at the top, reloaded 32 plugins. So that, you could try that, it might help in case there was some kind of network problem loading. Okay, so I can keep typing if you like. Okay, sure. Okay, so I've, okay. And the, the source code we're editing is stored on our run pop or is it stored locally on this link? If you're using Orion Hub, then the content, the, what you're editing is stored on Orion Hub. Oh, okay. Yeah. It can be elsewhere. Like the, uh, the, the file system used by Orion is another plugin, and the plugin for that could live on another domain. So in theory, you can be, have your tools live on Orion Hub, but have your content live on some other domain. 
and you could access it through like the Orion plugin lets you access that uh, on another domain. So that's, that's possible to do. Or we've experimented with having a plugin that um, whose contents are stored like an NSFTP uh, uh, directory, so you can directly edit um, over F FTP some other um, site, which is, you know, it's a bit slow for, for doing real development, but you could, if you just wanted to tweak some file, you could use the FT FTP uh, file system plugin to, to connect and do that, so that's kind of neat. All right, so what do you, I was gonna, I'm just yeah. Typing build uh, content right now. Uh, yeah, I was gonna, Maybe we just copy it from... Yeah, maybe some of the more complicated stuff, just copy it. I mean, that's, th this function is really trivial. All it's doing is it's building HTML in a string, so it's not super exciting. Yeah, so, so we, we, so we we'll can go to uh, sports mapper, right? Take this. Yeah, so we're, yeah, copy that build content function. And the other thing I didn't do is the spreadsheet ID because it was a bit long. So we'll copy it from the. Sure. Okay. So maybe add, we're getting errors about document. Maybe add the a comment. Glo global, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the syntax validation is provided by uh, JS. Actually, it's not. It's provided by ESLint, which is a, a, a JavaScript uh, syntax analysis tool that uses the Esprima JavaScript parser. Um, but the, the only thing you need to know there is it has. When you declare a global in JavaScript. Uh, the, the parser doesn't know wh where that global comes from, right? Because it's, if you're building a web application, that global is, is in the browser's DOM and the, the syntax, the, the validation tool can't tell if this is actually a global variable or whether it's something you forgot to declare. So it's trying to help you by saying, you're referencing some variable you don't declare. Um, you, can, you can, at the top of your file, say, I'm declaring my globals that I'm accessing from outside this page, and that helps the linting tool um, you know, not report errors for, for those things. Uh, and there's a shortcut, browser, browser colon true at the top just says all of the standard global variables that you find in a browser context, don't report those as warnings. So document, console, window, um, you can re now reference. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. So we were pulling data out of the spreadsheet. We're invoking this function on the spreadsheet. The next function up saying for each, for each team within that uh, spreadsheet, we're going to do something. What that does is build, some, build an HTML content representation for that team uh, and add it into the document. So let's try running it, see what happens. I have another tab open already. You hit? Yeah, it was the same exercise one, right? So. All right. Oh, did we miss CSS? Support map for CSS? Okay. So we, but the content is displayed. Okay, so the content is displayed. So we grabbed the content out of the spreadsheet and we're rendering it, but we're missing some of our styling here. So we can just, yeah. No, no, Bootstrap is there. Is the CSS, yeah. Here, I can pull it up here if you want to just create it. Like it's a simple one, right? Or you can copy it, whatever. Oh, did you, did you just copy the CSS? Uh, is it so it's a The sport mapper dot CSS. Ah, okay. yeah. Yeah. And just open that up to take a look at it so we can explain what's going on. Didn't know the yeah. CSS. This one, right? Yeah. So this is just some very simple styling that we're giving for our our table elements and for the title. I don't, so I don't actually think you need Bootstrap for this example, but it's fine. Yeah. We'll, we can leave it there. 
So, and Orion has syntax highlighting uh, validation for, for CSS as well, content assist. Um, so all those tools are there. Just giving you a hint there. Okay, so you ran it and it looked, yeah. looked good? It was good. Has everyone been making progress? Anyone have trouble or it's good? Have trouble over here? Okay. Um, okay. So we have. Oh, so the JS. Uh, okay. Yeah, you put it in the lib directory. That's fine. Support mapper JS. So, well, let's open the, like if you open the, the browser console and see if there's an error reported. So like when you, so if you open your application and, and open, um, I don't know, it's F12 on for me, but it's, uh, it sh yeah, there you go. So if you open the console, oh, this up here, console. Okay, so now just reload the page, see if we get any, no, just, just hit F5 or whatever, uh, yeah. So let's look at the network tab. Let's see if there's anything happening here. Get okay. So it's 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 running. Yeah. So you you have this result. The page with you know with the Okay. So maybe it's just taking some time. Do you plan in Orion having a multi-tab editor? Like in, do you plan uh, having a multi-tab editor like in Eclipse? Uh, well, so right, right now we can just open you know multiple tabs in the browser. But uh, John, are there any plans for multi multi editors in one tab? No, the I mean the. The, the reasoning there has been to let's use the mechanisms that the browser has. And since the browser has pretty good mechanisms for tabs, use, use that. So use a tab per editor. If you the, the story when you're used to Eclipse and having a clicking and then uh, back to my browser. Right, yeah. Or maybe just uh, navigation, uh, a navigation history like in... Uh, right. When you're really used to work with uh, multi... Uh, from yeah, no, I understand. Uh, history would be useful, I think. Uh, it's funny, though, because a lot of web developers who are used to these other lightweight editors are used to something like this, where they just have files and they collect them and they only have one editor pane. It seems to be but pretty common for... Uh, uh, Mr. Way, like, uh, yeah, history, for sure. You go to previous location and go to right. the exact location. Before. Yeah. Yeah, well, you can. I mean, you can do. You can use your browser history. Like every every file you open is a link, and you you can use your browser history. Uh, should you should be able to use the browser history to? Yeah. Yeah. So, for instance, if you have this sports mapper and yep. stuff like that. Um, I still have the comments embedding the yeah. styles just because I don't have this. Uh, no, that, that looks, oh, that looks right. Yeah. That looks okay to me. Uh, yeah. It's, so it's not, um, it doesn't look this quite the same as him, eh? So, 
Yeah, so but I mean, I, I, I embedded the, yeah, but, uh, the CSS. Uh, right. And the, I think I think that's fine though, because I think what he did is he, he used the Bootstrap CSS script. Okay. But if he doesn't have that, I think like because what you have looks familiar to me for the basic example. So I think he he. You, you, you think I should also insert the Bootstrap CSS? Well, you can try it. Yeah, I think it's that's a more advanced example that uses Bootstrap. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's either way. I mean, this the examples are intended to get more and more uh, nicer looking. So it's it's it looks like you're you're good. So and you're getting so let's look at your your source. Okay, what about fetching? So. If you go back to your ne the in network tab, so did it fetch the spreadsheet? Is the, the first interesting step? Uh, uh, I don't see a call. Like there should be a call to where it's fetching the spreadsheet. So okay, go back to your index HTML or to your support mapper JS. Right. So so we have so. Yeah, so it should you should be seeing a load uh, uh, reference to that. And tabletop, you have that. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try running the solution to see if that works? So exercise two. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so it, it seems like it's not getting to the, like that part, that looks fine, but what I'm not seeing is the call if in SportMapper.js. Uh, let's see, SportMapper.js, yeah, so if you go here, it's that call to the, well, the first thing we should see is on load, we should see it calling to, to get that spreadsheet. And I don't see that call. So if you go back to the network tab, you should be able to see, see it's loading all your... Sorry? This one is mine. Yes, yeah, so if you just, uh, can you expand this a bit more so we can see? So index, board mapper, so we haven't... So look, look at this one, so and look at the response. Is that the same? Yeah, so... Support mapper does. It's not loading the CJ, it's not loading any JavaScript. I wonder, you don't. Maybe I need to put it on the, uh, not on the deep folder. No, it doesn't matter. No. So you can just go here, copy it, just click Control, Control C. No, I don't see a problem there, but I don't see what. Yeah, I don't see what's. Okay. And so I wonder. I can't see what's wrong there. Yeah, it's not loading your JavaScript at all. So script. I can't see. You, uh, it seems so simple. The only thing I can see you did differently is your script elements, but it shouldn't matter. No, it's not even loading that script, so maybe replace the index HTML. I can't see what's wrong. Oh. 
Can we apart from seeing a uh, split orientation? All right, let's try it. Okay, so now we're okay. So that's that's okay. So that's we must have had some basic error we weren't seeing. So the difference here is that that it's fine. The um, Sport Mapper JS wasn't in the lib, but you can just add lib slash there. On, oh, yeah. So that's what I would have expected. If you couldn't, if it couldn't find the script, you would have gotten an error. Mm -hmm. The fact that you didn't see any error at all uh, is is strange to me. Like I, it must have been something really basic. We, we missed. Okay. Sorry. Orientation <laughs> is. Um, that is for the um, Markdown editor. Uh -huh. It's basically if you have an editor that has multiple panes. Yeah. Uh, which that one doesn't, so you can't see any difference. Okay. But if you open a markdown file, there's a there's a preview pane that shows you the, so that, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so I think, so let's continue. We want to make sure we cover more of the material. So now we've done, we built something interesting, it works. Now is a good time to back up our work. So. We're, uh, Shimon will just do a quick overview of, of the Git UI capabilities in Orion, and we'll use that to, to uh, stage and commit uh, our work so that we've, we've got it backed up. Uh, right, so um, uh, the Git, Git UI uh, was recently um, a bit updated, and, you know, some, some pieces were, were replaced. So uh, you have this, uh, this icon, the second. Uh, from the top, which is for uh, working with uh, the video repository. So when you when you are in the project, just click uh, the barrel, and you should see um, uh, some details about 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 your Git repository, like what you have, what changes you have uh, locally to commit, uh, whether you have some uh, commits ready to uh, to push or something to fetch, and in general we have. Uh, most of Git commands uh, implemented in, in Orion. Uh, there are some missing, like Git stash, for instance, but otherwise, uh, I think we, we look pretty good. So, um, right, so this, if you look at the page, you will see that uh, we have some changes um, that we can, that we have just locally, and we can create a commit um, using, using these changes. So here, click, click this, um, uh, enter the commit message uh, area, provide something like the comment for the commit. Um, like finished example two or something? Yeah, example two. Example two changes. Uh, you can, of, of course, discard them uh, or some of these. Hmm. Right, so uh, when, you, when you keep selecting them here or you just select them all with this click, with, with this checkbox, you can discard them all, but we don't want to do this. Um, uh, we just click commit six files. When you click this, um, you will be asked about some about the author and commenter details. So I will provide mine. And that's just because you haven't set up, haven't configured your settings. So. In the, we can show it afterwards, but in the settings page, you can configure what your defaults are for your Git information, and it'll get filled in automatically. So typically, you're not going to be writing that every commit. You can set it once in your settings, and it'll always be used. But also, yeah, but also you can just click. Oh, if you click there, there you go. Yeah, and then, and then you, will be not, you won't be asked anymore about uh, these details. You just click OK. Uh, so this will create a, a commit that is still in your uh, local cloud of the repository in your workspace. And the next thing we would like to do is push, but it will not work for you because you cloned, right? Yeah, if you cloned our repo, you won't be able to, you won't be able to, um, yeah, to push so to it, but that's fine. We'll just, we can see that far. Right. And if you click on the, there's a link there t on the commit that you can open up um, on the title of the message. Yeah. So if you open that, it, it opens another page with details about that commit. Another 
Yeah, for sure, you can do that. Yeah. Um, so if you have your own repository at GitHub and you found it, and you are the member of the of the, of the repository, you are allowed to push to it. So you are just not the members of the of the of the repository that you clone to um, to Orion during this. Yes, yeah, this was my question. I clone your repository and then push it. Yes, yeah. So he, she, she, she can set up another remote, right? And then push to the other remote. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So this is Chrome, right? So uh, yeah. okay, so if you if you are on, on this oh, sorry, not this this one. So you and you have your own um, uh, remote, like your own repository, you can cr cr add it here, oh, okay. right? So you have new remote. Okay, yeah. But but, uh, but we have issues with Firefox. So if one of you is on Firefox, you will not see the remotes here. But that's something under investigation, right? Anyway. Yeah, we we briefly tried to put a new version of Orion on Orion Hub last night, and uh, we found a bug. <laughs> and you can see it. You, you see can, it? But, but you can see this, uh, you know, uh, in it? the region underneath, or not. No, you're right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we can see new remote, probably it will work for you, but uh, you will not see this newly added uh, remote under, okay. you know, under, under the branch section. But, uh, but yeah, but you can, you can just click new remote, uh, mm -hmm. other new okay. remote and push to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can switch between branches, right? So if you want to work against something else, we have three branches, you can, you can ch ch change to the branch you would like to work. Uh, you have, we have... Uh, Actually, one thing that's pretty new is the undo. So I cr you created this commit here and realized, oh, shoot, one of the files I didn't want to commit. So if you hit the undo button, that will um, basically bring it back to being unstaged again. So now you can remove one of these files or change your files again and, and create a new commit. So you can kind of back up and fix something and, and yeah, go forward again. In this case, uh, when you have a um, file, a change to a file that you would like to add to the to the existing commit. You can choose amend, right? So, so you commit. Uh, so, and if we make any changes, so next time we commit, uh, we can amend, right? Uh, yeah, there's like a more there's a more button. Yeah, so there is one one new thing that that we uh, added is sync. And if you have a clone at GitHub, for instance, and some local uh, and, and local uh, clone of the of the of the repository, it will fetch and match changes, and then push your changes to this repository. So it will do all these operations with one click. Yeah. So the goal with this re with this redesign of the UI, which we just released last night, is trying to streamline the really basic processes. So we're not trying to hide the Git commands. Like every Git command is mapped to a button that you can click if you want to do fetch rebase, merge, whatever, and then push. You can do that all you know, as separate steps. Um, but if you know you're, no one else is working on this, you're not very unlikely to get a conflict, the sync button just does all those steps, fetch, either rebase or merge, and then push. So it's you know, the very common workflow. I've made some changes, I want to deliver them. Right. Uh, I was trying to streamline that. So and similarly for committing files, like in our previous iteration, we had, you had to select the files, click stage, like git add, and then, Again, then you have to go commit. So there was stage and commit, which is a normal Git workflow, but we're trying to streamline that to for make the the common workflows really easy to do. So you can still, you know, you can still do the individual Git commands, but we streamline the the common scenario so that they're easy, they're much faster to do. So for for more advanced users, uh, there is a configuration section where you can modify. Uh, when you extend it, you will see all the configuration for the clone for the repository, so you can modify that, including uh, the user mail and name that is used for uh, uh, for committing for commits, and also uh, uh, these are these are your branches, and you have a set of commands, um, and including Git log, right? So you can, for instance, for Origin Master, you can open it in a in a new tab, see uh, see the commits that are in the branch. Yeah, okay, it works. Well, so, so that's, uh, I think that this part actually works pretty well at the moment. Yeah, this. actually one more thing, just if you quickly, if you edit one of the files and just show the diff, the diff viewer. I don't think we showed that. All oh, right,
right? So we can we can extend uh, the change in the changes section, and we can see the inline editor compare view. So actually, this is the editor, but we can switch it to side by side mode, and you can see uh, like you know changes made to the file. You can also open it in a uh, full page edit compare view by clicking the compare compare link, and and you can even uh, modify. I, I hope. But yeah, you can even modify the file here. So if you if you still want to make a change to this to this file, you can add it here. Click save. And when you go back to the to the git status and you refresh it, you should. Can I also configure it to push to get? Um, so uh, it's it, just uh, do I have to uh, configure the so, master merge branch? Yeah, so we don't actually have any um, like special support for Garrett, like you see in eGit, where you say push to Garrett and configure for Garrett. Um, you can actually do it. I haven't actually tried it recently, but you by creating a, you know um, creating a new remote for Garrett and pushing to refs for master, like and there's. Um, did you undo your change? So actually, yeah, we never saw amend. Where did that go? If you uh, so select select the file to commit, and then is there? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Where is uh, I selected? And what discard? Comments. Oh, okay. So I need to enter the okay right. here. Right. Right. So oh, so there's the more if you. Oh, it's right there. It's the message at the bottom. So amend previous commit or prepare for Garrett means add the change ID. So you, it does that much at least. Right. Um, we definitely want to add better support for the Garrett workflow because we use it ourselves. So um, we want to make sure that that works really well. Um, so far, you just need to know the uh, the name of the ref, right? That should be. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's painful to do it by hand. It'll be it would be really nice to have custom support there for sure. Yeah, so we track we, we, we track the work uh, in, in our Godzilla right now. But yeah, we've done some work on it, and there's uh, a guy from SAP who's been doing work on it too. Who's been, he, he's the one who added the change ID and, and yeah. some of the other things for that. So it's hopefully coming soon. Yeah. So one more thing: uh, if you go to the uh, commit page, uh, you have this inline uh, inline uh, compare views here too, right? So you can just uh, look at all these changes and see what, what was added. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's it, more or less. Yeah, okay, so let's maybe go on to the next exercise then. Okay, so, so far what we've done is we've fetched a bunch of data from a spreadsheet, we've rendered it on a web page. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is um, use Google Maps APIs to create a map and we will render the teams on a, on a Google Map. Oh, I can yeah, pull it up. Okay. How much time do we have? We've got uh, half an hour at least, so we can. We'll go. And if we run out of time, we can start copying stuff. Yeah. Okay, so we can go to sports. So we should go to sportsmapper.js again. Right. So th that part is the same. Window on load. We get the spreadsheet. We call init. Uh, sure. and then the show info function. I think we should copy it. Is it's different. Right now we just uh, display the uh, the content of the table. Let me. Uh, what, what 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 is at the top? Why don't we copy the styles but write out some of the basics? And this one is the that's plotting the teams on the map. Okay. Let's start, start writing the show info function and then we'll... The build content is not here, right? Build content. Just we don't have it, we don't have that anymore. And opened, right. Okay, so just, uh, okay, so we should remove this uh, for, for, for the next exercise. We should just remove uh, build content and append. And uh, just leave show info and window.load functions. Yeah, so it's starting here. Right. Show 
Actually, you know what we should do? Skip the styles. We'll just do, just, because that should, that'll still work and just look ugly, and then we can add the styles after. Okay, so. So just. So we're invoking the Google Maps API there to instantiate a new map object, and we're passing in the HTML element that it should be contained inside. So I'll just explain what this function was doing because we, we copied some of the last bit of it. So we're creating a new map object. We're passing in a uh, this map options JSON object, which is uh, just all the settings for that map. The you know customizing the start location and the style and what zoom level and things like that. We pass that in to create the map. Uh, we're setting some styles on the map, and then we're what we're doing is for each element in our in our team database, our spreadsheet, we're going to invoke this function called plot, which is going to plot that team onto the map. Right. So I think the plot is pretty straightforward. And you should declare a map at the top somewhere. So lat LNG, lat long, so that's just a simple object representing uh, coordinates on a map, essentially. And we're pulling the, the latitude and longitude coordinates for that team from, from our map data, for, sorry, from our spreadsheet data. So, and this is just defining the style of the pin that we're gonna show on the map, so the size and color and all that. Okay, so that was our JS. What about um, index HTML? So we got support mapper. Now we need to add the Google Maps script. APIs.com. Slash maps. Slash API. Slash JS. Sensor equals true. Yep. Good. Okay, now we've got a little bit of a different impl uh, implementation of our body here. So instead of a uh, so body class background. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we uh, uh, yeah, we can keep that div, but we'll call it container. Div map container. So the first div we cr are creating here is just a container for the map so we can add a border around it, essentially. And then another div that will be, that the map will be uh, added to. And divs are just 
generic unstructured, um, generic invisible structural elements that you can add to your page and put whatever content in it you want. It doesn't by itself have any appearance, but you can find a border on it and use it for doing layout, essentially. So we can try to run it. Sure. I th what about the CSS? Uh, Support mode. Is it which one? Is it sport mode? Yeah. So just maybe I'll just, co just copy. copy this CSS. This is just styling the different elements that we have here that we didn't have before. So we'll just copy that the CSS from the solution. And Bootstrap is not used, right? So Bootstrap. Yeah, we don't need it, but you can leave it. Let's open the console, see what's happening. Load it, reload it. Look at the network tab. Is it? Okay, so we've got our map of the region and we've got the, the teams plotted on the map. Maybe just bring the JavaScript back up in case someone, everyone is still, still working on it. Does anyone have any trouble or doing okay or just using the solutions now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fine. It is actually something you can build in three hours. Like we sat down at one point with Anton and we actually like wrote the whole application in three hours. So it's, it's really just a cool example of an application you can build with modern web technologies. You know, we we're making use of Google Docs for our for our persistence layer. We're grabbing some libraries that are doing mapping, that are doing uh, pulling data from spreadsheets, and then with just a little bit of our own code, we, we're building a web application that's pretty neat. Like just this, these basic elements, you can create um, pretty interesting applications. So I don't know if you just want to open the exercise four just to show what it looks like. We just. The, ne the next exercise was just tinkering with the styling a bit more. So this one, we've, you know, it's been styled a bit, and if you click on the, the individual pins, we've, we've now got those table elements that we did in exercise two, and we're rendering that inside a pop-up inside, inside the, uh, in the map. And we have links to the team's home pages, and I think in some cases we've got the Twitter accounts linked so you can open up right. uh, the team's web pages. So it's just a really simple, you know, data, data viewing application. Yeah, and the colors of the circles are changed, right? Right, so yeah, this was actually, 
someone in, when we did the tutorial in Germany thought of, he took, we happened to have the, in the spreadsheet we had the team's official colors and he, th he decided to use that to color the pins. So these pins are apparently colored with the official team colors of those, those rugby teams. And the size of the circle is number of cups. Right, the number of championships they've won is the size of the pins, which, I don't know, I guess apparently Carcassonne is a really good uh, rugby team. I thought it was a pretty small town, but. So there's loads of open, really interesting open data sets out there now um, that are available in Google Spreadsheets. So one uh, that's really neat is the Guardian newspaper in the UK has this data, uh, data homepage that has just a massive library of data sets and they're all in Google Spreadsheets. So you can you know, take an application, you can, you can very easily build a web application that's pulling those really interesting data sets, doing whatever analysis you want, plotting them on a map, you know, doing uh, other interesting things with them. So it's, it's really, uh, really neat what you can do with just a few, uh, you know, a few, few simple libraries these days. So I don't know, if, do, maybe we just want to do a quick tour of uh, the rest of Orion, just to make sure that we've covered, you can see what's, what's available. So, so one thing that um, uh, uh, I, I showed one view um, who runs uh, local stuff was instead of cloning uh, something from a GitHub, a repository, you can uh, import something from a zip file that you have uh, locally or I think via URL, it should work also. But anyway, yep. you can, yeah, so if you click, uh, if you have a folder, um, in folder, you create one of this here. You can click uh, in the file menu, you have import, and you can choose from HTTP, SFTP, mm -hmm. or file. Um, file or zip file. So it, it, if it's a zip file, you can. Uh, okay. So for example, I can export my JavaScript project from Eclipse and yeah. it and just. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in, in Eclipse, you can go export as archive, take that archive, and actually, even on Windows and Mac, at least, uh, drag and drop works. So you can actually, if you have a zip file on your desktop, you can actually just drag that into Orion, uh, and it'll unzip it for you. Yeah, yeah. So I just imported it. So uh, right now, um, you, you can also create a project from from a zip, a zip archive, but we noticed it uh, it has issues, so we need to fix that quickly. But, mm. uh, but in, in general, you can uh, you can import something from uh, from a zip uh, file or yeah drop down. I think it worked for Firefox, right. also on Windows. Well, anyway, right. so, so that, this is one of the features. What else? The uh, the shell, I guess we haven't looked at. Right. So. You know, one of the challenges with with an, a browser-based tool is you might have existing tools that you ca that you can't um, that you know it takes some time to build plugins to to Orion to do a rich integration like we've done with Git the Git plugin and and the JavaScript uh, tooling plugin. You know, those are fairly advanced and they're using different uh, kind of in Eclipse terms extension points to plug into the in, into the framework. Uh, but if you just want to get a really quick integration, uh, the shell is is uh, it has a plugin mechanism so you can define plugins that ex ex extend the shell, but they're really very simple. So you can, you can introduce a plugin to Orion that adds, so we, Shimon's got a couple of plugins here. One is doing a node command, so NPM. You can do NPM installs uh, from the shell. And I think he also has some Cloud Foundry. So there's a Cloud Foundry plugin that lets you do deployment of an application to Cloud Foundry. So that's a way, if you have existing command line tools, getting those integrated into Ryan is really simple because you can define a, a pretty simple um, you know, extension and connect it to some uh, native tool uh, pretty easily. And, it, and it's a really nice shell. It's actually it's built on a, a console framework for Mozilla and it has uh, like content assist or completions uh, on commands in the shell. Uh, it, and it does, it'll, like, for example, I don't know what you're typing there, it's off the bottom, but if you, if you if you you type cd okay. for change directory, it'll, it'll it'll pop up a list of the available directories, and so it has has some nice features to make it easy to use. Yeah, yeah we can't see. Well, it's off the bottom, but if. okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, okay. And you can choose from 
files, right? And click on UD. And it will open the editor, right? With a file. Right. So also you have support for MD files, right? Markdown files. Right, so yeah, this is actually a fairly new thing as well. So Markdown is becoming a really popular uh, format for doing basic documentation. You see a lot, um, you know, GitHub repositories often use, use a readme.md markdown file. Uh, they're just, um, they have a very simple syntax, like it's almost impossible to write an invalid markdown file. Uh, and, and it converts syntax, it looks a little bit like wiki syntax, uh, converts it to HTML for you. So. We have a, a Markdown editor which, with, which has you know, syntax highlighting of your typing, but it also has real-time rendering of the content, uh, either beside or below. So you can, you can, you can build out documentation and, and Markdown really easily and immediately see what the rendered form of that looks like. So that's really handy for if you use Markdown for, as a documentation format. Right. So John mentioned also integration with Cloud Foundry. So uh, if, you, um, if you use Cloud Foundry as your runtime environment, we have support for that. So um, uh, you, can use, um, you can use exercise five um, uh, from the tutorial, which is prepared to run uh, as a Node.js service that publishes this, um, um, this page with showing, showing the Google map with, with, with uh, pins. So um, right now, I think I don't have any instance of, of Cloud Foundry configured to work with Oragon. So if I click, the, if I select this exercise five and click deploy, uh, I would expect to see message that I need to go to settings and configure my cloud. So um, you can put here URLs of the manage and API URL. So Cloud Foundry has a, a, uh, or manage URL, which is uh, interface and API, which is the endpoint for uh, calling uh, REST, RESTful API. And if you configure that, um, next time you click deploy, it will be just deployed to the Cloud Foundry, right? And you will have a support, not sure I can use the tools. You can tr well, do you already, yeah, you can try. Oh, I, I can yeah, try, okay. You can so, try. Uh, I mean, this is really just an example of like, you know, what we built today was a very simple web app, a static web application, right? It has no, it's not using any backing services. Uh, so it's very easy to just run it locally in Orion Hub. But let's say you're building a more interesting web application that's making use of some backing, like a real backing database or making use of some other libraries that, um, you know, making use of like uh, Node.js, for example, uh, to, to do like more complicated server side work, um, then you need some runtime for that, right? So Cloud Foundry is just the, you know, a very popular open source one uh, that we provided support for, but you can easily imagine doing very similar deployment to, um, you know, Amazon EC2 or, um, you know, Windows Azure or whatever, all the different uh, PaaS platforms out there. Um, so you can build, so you, you can build an application entirely in your browser and run it, um, you know, on these PaaS environments. And it's really pretty neat that you can, you can do your entire development experience if you're targeting these kind of cloud runtimes. You can do your development in the cloud, you can deploy to the cloud, and all you ever need is a web browser. So it's really cool. Um, if, if, you, if that suits your needs and that's what, you know, the kind of application you're building, you know, you, you basically don't need any tools anymore. Like it's really, um, right. really so, simple. So right now I'm just deploying this application, Node.js application with this uh, showing them up to uh, the Cloud Foundry. I choose the organization and space and just take... Uh, yeah, it might take some, some, time. some time. And right now when I go to, uh, to the root of the project, I will see that um, there, is, there is deployment information. When I can see logs for the deployment, I can open the application. So this is the link to... That work. cool. So this is, yeah, so this is... This application packaged up as a, it's a node application in this case, right? Yeah. yeah so we've created a basic, very trivial node web server uh, that is rendering that application. Uh, and it's not making use of any other services. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, and it's running it on, on, a, on a, okay. in this case, it's an IBM instance of Cloud Foundry yeah. called Bluemix. You can control the application from here. So you have uh, lifecycle comments like start, stop, and uh, redeploy. You can also, uh, as John said, this is actually Bluemix instance of Cloud Foundry, but you can click manage and uh, go here and see the, you know, the state of the app. Right. Is, um, is a time track available? So if I think of my employees, for example, that I can track, okay, how long have they worked on certain projects? So it's an issue often to take track how much I can. Right. Uh, 
depending on what country you live in, whether that's legal or not. Yeah, I'm totally <laughs> But uh, I mean, yeah. so, so the, uh, the calculated use for our customers. Yeah, right, right, for billing purposes, for, yeah. for example, right. Uh, you know, Orion doesn't currently have anything built in for that, um, but that's a pretty trivial, trivial step to take once you're in this kind of environment, right? Um, like there's another uh, product called Code Envy, which is a similar um, browser-based tool environment, and I've seen demos of, of their analytics where they're tracking at the level of like every keystroke of their develop of a developer if you wanted to if you if that was if that if that, if that was yeah even yeah exactly so you can certain I mean that that kind of information is very trivial to gather once you're running in a, in a browser environment right so you, you could just be you know we could in Orion today you could enable logging of um, file accesses for example um, and then you know, dump that into a data store, do some analytics on it pretty pretty easily. So Orion doesn't have any kind of built-in console for managing that. The most we have is we have an admin page that lets you see uh, the last time the user logged in and how much disk usage they have. But that's just a very basic console that we use for administering like the Orion hub. Uh, and it doesn't give us any more data than that, so. Uh, right. So. Yeah. So if you if you want to try with uh, with Cloud Foundry, you can always uh, you know enter this you know Bluemix.net thing, right? And accounts are free there. So. Yeah, there's free accounts from the IBM Bluemix, and and Pivotal has a has a has a Cloud Foundry as well, where you have free accounts. Um, so there's lots, and, and all these cloud platforms do that. They have free environments where you can try before you buy, right? So you can you can create an app on, on most of these platforms. Uh, you know, do simple things, access some access some basic simple services, and build. Um, applications really quickly. And one more thing is, uh, you, you probably noticed this connect button here. So uh, uh, in Orion we have a concept of, of projects. And uh, okay, so if you if you uh, look at the project JSON, there are some uh, metadata for the project, including um, uh, dependencies. So right now you have just information about the dependency, and it's not really used, right? So you, you can, for instance, if you have a project like like this French like one champion, championship, you can just Add all dependencies so so that the user can see where you know where you can get them from. So in this case, uh, this is GitHub. So you can click connect and um, it should uh, download the content content of the dependency to your to your workspace. So you can you know, see it or copy or something. Yeah, so that's just a very basic way of, of, of managing dependencies of your project. I mean, typically if you're building a, a real web application, you're going to have a lot of these dependencies and you're going to be using, there's tools like uh, Bower and Grunt, which are client-side uh, you know, client dependency management tools, kind of like, like Maven that will build up, you know, fetch your dependencies and build your structure of your application. So if you're doing like a really complicated application, you're probably using uh, a tool like that. But if you just have really basic dependencies of your project, you can use this mechanism to kind of create those links. So, so I, I think one. Of the so we should also just leave a couple minutes for questions as well, just in case anyone else. Right. But so sorry. One thing that I probably should mention is this uh, icon here. So, uh, so we have um, a separate page for searching through your projects, right? So you can click the uh, this magnifying mm -hmm. glass, right? And here we have a page for you know searching through uh, all your stuff in the workspace. Okay. Right, and there's also like as a control shift after whatever open file. There's a there's a keyboard shortcut to open you know a, a file with a given name. Um, so let's, we only have a couple minutes left, so I just want to make sure if there's any more questions that we cover them. And if you have any feedback on the, you know, the, the usability of the tool or any feature that's missing from the tool, definitely come find us, or you can enter bugs in the Eclipse uh, against Orion um, Bugzilla and let us know, you know what, what problems you have, what you missed, what you'd like to see improved. We'd really like to get that feedback. If you click this, uh, this icon here, you have reported back. Please. There we go. Yeah. Just click it. And, uh, you need to have an account created on Mozilla, but it's you know an easy, easy step, and you can fill it back. Yeah. Or there's a mailing list. There's an Orion Dev mailing list you can find pretty easily, and send us a message on that too if you want. So. Um, yep. I have one more question. Um, for example, I, I use less to for my CSS files. Right. Is there a plugin for Orion, or how can I embed that? Uh, there's no. It's 
platform it depends on some people use this and this. Right. So there's no sp specific support for less. I mean, you could still author it in Orion, but you'd like it doesn't. Have, it doesn't. Have, we don't have any specific like um, tooling support for it right now. Yeah. So the, the tooling in Orion right now is focused entirely on basically the basics of JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. For those three, you know, we have then the JavaScript support has gotten quite advanced, like there's a really good parser behind it and really good uh, validation content assist, um, but it, for less or other types of, um, you know, like if you're using CoffeeScript or different types of you know, dialects or languages, uh, Orion has basic syntax highlighting for quite a lot because we use the code mirror, um, there's this code mirror library for a syntax highlighting that we use and so we have, I don't know, 20 syntax highlighting for maybe 20 languages, but uh, for other tools today there, there aren't. Uh, there aren't any, um, but Orion does have a plugin mechanism and all of the JavaScript tools and the CSS tools that we have are use that plugin mechanism so someone can define a plugin for other languages just like in Eclipse. Okay, I think we're done for today. Um, yep. Yeah. Questions? Uh, uh, like you, we use a web browser, you can open the, the window in your uh, current tab or in the browser tab. But uh, if there's no, uh, how, how do you manage when you open the same files in two tabs and you make a change in one? And uh, because uh, usually in, in Eclipse, as a developer, I, I open like 12 files at the same time. Yeah. So, uh, so if you have multiple tabs open on the same file, that'll be okay. But if you edit, and like it's going to be. It's not, I, I believe what, what's going to happen is when you try to save the second one, it'll say you, it doesn't match. Like it's changed since you last obtained it, so it won't let you put it back again. So it saves you from accidentally doing that, but it won't let you do any merge or anything at that point. I mean, what you really want is the, the live buffer where they're sharing the same editor buffer, right? Like in Eclipse, you have multiple editors or, or a split editor, you're operating on the same underlying buffer. So you t type in one and it's changing. Or just, just maybe both, a, right? Um, notification that when you open a tab on the file. Uh, oh, that you already have. You, you have only already a tab open. It. Right. Like right. Yeah, that would be useful. Like, or you know, maybe you know, the open menu or the file dialog. You know, open file dialog could give you a list of the things you already have open, and you just yeah. jump to it instead of opening a new one. Right. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, we do have some T-shirts. We only have a few sizes left. We have. I think large, extra large, and small. So we'll just put those on the ledge at the back, and you're welcome to, to help yourself to those.